Let's see. Gameplay patch 735D and matchmaking features. We just released gameplay patch 735D. Chen had it coming. Uh, and with a new set of features. Matchmaking hero ban rework. Over the last year or so, we've taken a number of visible actions against users of uh, third-party cheats as we investigate each uh, cheat. We primarily focus on understanding what they're doing so we can track it and stop it. But while doing that, we also ask ourselves uh, why some cheaters feel compared to use these tools in the first place. The most common explanation is to get an unfair advantage, which obviously runs uh, counter to the desires of the donor community and a sense of competitiveness and fairness at its heart. Even so, sometimes there are still things that we can learn and we use uh, and used to improve the Dota experience for everyone, or at least everyone who hasn't been banned for cheating. Pre-game hero bans are an example of this. Many cheats last year focused on gaining an advantage during the 10 second hero ban phase at the start of each game. We stepped back to look at original goals of this phase, letting uh, players express uh, preference for what heroes they didn't want to play against, but without creating scenarios where players with small hero pools get permanently locked out. Looked at some data and asked if there was a way we could uh, better serve these goals while solving some other problems at the same time. With today's update, we removed the start of match ban phase and replaced it with a ban preference stored in your account. If you load the heroes tab, you can select the four heroes that you don't want to see in your games. You're guaranteed when you join in a matchmaking game that at least one of them will be banned. You can change your list of banned heroes whenever you want. If you leave some banned slots empty, it's possible the empty slot will be selected as your uh, banned hero. In other words, there's no advantage to leaving empty slots. The new system addresses uh, a number of problems the previous system had. You can't forget to ban. You don't have to learn. It also saves the time. The time of banning. Which I like. The, that, that's a nice thing. Um, don't have to blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. I haven't gone to that yet, babe. You don't have to learn that sometimes suggested uh, bans are ignored by the game. You're not on a tight clock to make a stressful decision, and in the end, most players make the same uh, make the same way almost. Most players make the same way almost all the time. As an added bonus, it also makes target bans impossible, whether those bans are against known personalities or random players in a pub for which you've looked up data. Streamer buff. Streamer buff chat. Some game modes, i.e. Captain's Mode, Captain's Draft, Ability Draft, Turbo, either didn't have a pre-game ban phase or already had non-standard ban rules. The, these modes are unchanged. Dota Plus pre-match matchmaker analytics. Millions of Dota players interact with the matchmaker every day and every single one has different priorities when looking for a game. Some prefer to get into a match as quickly as possible and are willing to accept the higher skill variants in uh, the game to save some time. Others want every match to be perfectly balanced. Dude, are you actually doing something to fix queue times? Is this? <laughs> um, uh, and we are will and are willing to wait longer for the best and closest games. Other players care less about the skill level of other players and much more about the personality and behavior in game. We've long waited to build features to let players uh, find matches that better align with their individual preferences early attempt to run into two problems. First, while players are good at describing the preferences to their preferences to other players, they aren't necessarily good at describing their preferences as inputs to a complex global matchmaking algorithm. I value skill variance 13% higher than the average Dota player. How can we create tools that uh, let players express their preferences naturally and directly? I mean, there are ways, but sure. Second, changes to matchmaker, matchmaker affects all Dota players, so we tend towards caution. The matchmaker always trying to strike a balance between individual player preferences and the health of uh, Dota as a whole. If, matchmake, if matches of Dota are bad, whether because of wild, uh, wild skill gap or poor player behavior, that's bad for uh, Dota as a community. If every match is perfect but takes three hours to form, that's bad too. New matchmaker... I mean, <laughs> we, we had like bad games and long queue times before, so I, I hope this is going to make it better. Uh, new matchmaker features, uh, features available to everyone at once risk breaking the matchmaker. And if we break the matchmaker, we break Dota. How can we ship the new matchmaking features? Dota Plus. Make it a subscribe thing. Well... Um, <laughs> How can we ship it uh, and learn how they work in practice while keeping risk to Dota low as a whole? The labs. 
within the new experimental umbrella of Dota Labs and initially limited to uh, initially limited to Dota Plus. If I can call it, guys. We are shipping a first pass of the feature that Dota players have been asking us forever. When you find a when you find a match in Dota, uh, Dota Plus will present some information about how the matchmaker evaluated the match. Oh, it will tell you. Overall match quality is good. Skill balance is perfect. <laughs> okay. It will tell us, like, if it's perfect. I feel like this is going to be a new meme. First time reading it. Um, sure. Uh, like an estimate of the skill range and behavior scores, you'll have a chance to accept that match or requeue to wait for a match that's better for you and your current preferences. Interesting. Interesting. So you can you can say that you don't want this. Uh, we were careful in building this feature to make uh, sure that any information we included would enable play players to express individual preferences about what kinds of matches uh, they prefer, but not granted a competitive advantage of any kind. The new dialogue can tell you that the skill variance is uh, skill variance of players in a match is high or low, but not whether or not you are on the team in the high or low end. Yeah, I mean, it, it ideally shouldn't even be that one of the teams is much higher than the other, right? The variance of the players can be high, but you can still have two even games. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily tell you if the team balance is off. Uh, why is this Dota Labs feature? The only way to know for sure how millions of Dota players are going to interact with the feature is to ship it. So that's what we're doing. We've done extensive modeling, but there's still a real risk here. We may be wrong about how players will use this feature or how it will affect the overall matchmaking experience in Dota. We don't want to lose those fears that we might be wrong. We don't want to let those fears that we might be wrong stop us from doing something that may benefit millions of Dota players. So we're shipping this as an experiment, shipping it inside Dota Plus limits access and accordingly uh, limit the risk to Dota. Uh huh. As with the other Dota Labs feature, your uh, time and your feedback will tell whether it grows or changes or gets retired. Onward. Uh, we know many of you are looking forward to Crownfall and we're looking forward to getting it into your hands. We're wrapping things up and expect a release mid-April. We'll see you then. I mean, this is interesting. I agree. This could be very good. It could be very bad. Like, we, we literally don't know. I, I cannot know for sure if this is going to make my matches get faster or if it's going to be worse. I will obviously be able to put it to, like, I just want games as soon as possible. But other people will probably put it to more balanced matches and maybe more people can even decline it. But we'll see. I mean, I, I literally have no idea what the outcome is going to be. People declining matches because they see that the variance is high or something, you know, it's going to be painful. But at the same time, those should be people who have accepted high variance in their settings, right? If they have high variance and they don't have that as a setting, then, then it makes sense they uh, declined. Anyway. Neutral creep update. Bonus experience from stacking neutral camps is decreased from 30 to 25. Makes sense. Less gold from the mud golems. Um, okay. Only the big one or the small ones too? Because if so, it's a lot of gold reduction. Uh, Saturn Mind Stealer. Less gold. BKB has longer cooldown. Damage bonus decreased from 350 to 100. Okay. Something... Okay, okay, yeah, they're, they're doing... No longer provides 25% spell amp by default. Now it can be toggled between two modes. One provides additional 250 damage. Other provides a uh, spell amp of 25%. We were talking about this. We, we, were, we were discussing this chat. That this could be a way to balance the Brute Rapier. Because, I mean, Brute Rapier is very broken. Uh, and this is a great idea for how to fix it, to be honest. Um, it's still good. Rapier is still a fantastic purchase. And now you could, you know, still do some cool stuff with this. Like toggle to, you know, cast some big spell and then toggle back afterwards. Because it's six seconds. It's not that long cooldown. Um, I like it. I think this is like the the slickest way to fix the Brooch Rapier meta that we have right now. Yeah, you could like play Lina and toggle it to do a big ulti. And then you could toggle back to do your right click shenanigans, you know. I feel like 25% spell amp isn't enough with no damage. It's not no damage. It's 100 damage. 100 damage and 25% spell amp. And then the ability to go back for 350 damage. So, I mean, it still does everything it did before, just not everything at once. Because that's the broken part. And that mainly only screws over 
the brooch builders. It will sort of screw over like hard carries who had Mjolnir and stuff as well. They're getting a little bit less spell damage, but yeah. Isn't that 70% damage decrease really bad? How the fuck is that a 70% damage decrease? You're reading it wrong. It's no longer 350, it's 100 damage. You can either get 250 more damage, which 100 plus 250 is 350, or you can get the 25% spell amp. It literally does what it did before, just toggle between the spell amp or having more damage. Okay, I feel like we have talked about it enough. Uh, good change, very good. We'll fuck over the brooch. Um, heart is, or I've just got his buffed. It's even more tankiness. It's like 700 plus HP now from uh, buying a Scotty. I think Scotty is very, very cool. Dominate now against the caster, the gold bounty from the dominated creep. That's a nice buff to Dominator. Dude, like him with Dominator build should be so good now with the Overlord buff and this shit. Oh my god. Yeah, it should be so good. Like, this is a big difference. Getting the gold bounty also means you should... I guess you don't get the experience. They don't say experience. Specifically gold bounty. Hmm. Okay. I mean, it's still, still a nice buff. Very quality of life. Uh, Javelin is nerfed and the Maelstrom is nerfed. Yeah. Everybody could see this coming. Maelstrom has been the carry item now for a long time. Uh, ever since the gloves were added. Same with the Gleipnir and the Mjolnir. They get the same inherited nerfs here um, for the proc chance. Also pretty big nerf to the uh, rushed Javelin for laning stage. 5%. I mean, makes a difference. Uh, cooldown is increased on the magic stick. Okay. That's gonna fuck with people, I feel. And magic wand now has a little bit less cooldown than a magic stick. So if anything, a little bit more incentivized to upgrade, but yeah, magic one nerfed. Uh, mirror image cooldown is increased by four seconds. So Manta style also quite a bit worse. Null talisman, justice for null talisman. It's back, baby. That 0.25 mana region is gonna make the difference. Not even memeing guys, that's actually not too bad. It's not a pretty valid option. That That's, you know, now I would say the balance between Wraith Band, Bracer and null is pretty close. Because Wraithband got the nerf on its armor and this gets the buff on the mana. It's pretty close now. All of them are definitely purchasable. Um, mana region nerf on Oblivion makes sense. It's just way too good. Builds into way too many key items. Um, mana region is decreased here as well. Int bonus is down on the Orchid and the mana cost is increased. Yeah, Orchid was way too strong. Still very strong. It's still very cheap to get an Orchid nowadays. Um, intelligence down a little bit and mana cost up as well. Parasma is nerfed slightly um, to not be stronger than the Witchblade in terms of uh, int to damage. And the uh, Brooch, Phantom, uh, Phantom Province can no longer apply critical strikes when enabled. Oh my fucking god, they took it out back, man. They fucking shot it. Brooch, man. Yeah, the Rapier nerf plus this, I mean, <laughs> you're fucking gone. Uh... Yeah, I don't feel like we're gonna see too much Brooch gameplay with this. Like, you can go for it, you can do stuff, but... Brooch is basically back in the dumpster, I think, with this. The, I think this was unnecessary with the Rapier change as well. I think the Rapier change alone already made... the Brooch pretty unattractive. Yeah, it's not gonna work for PA, it's not gonna work for Mars, you know... It's just not that cool anymore. Um... I wonder what happens if you do crit. So if you crit, it would just be a regular hit then? Do you waste a crit? Like, I have mechanical further questions on the implications of this. Or do you just not crit at all? The crit doesn't exist. So the PRD is, like, stored or saved or does nothing happen? Anyway, um, three seconds more on the Shadow Walk. Wow. 17 second duration? Shadow Blade is fucking forever now, dude. Okay, Shadow Blade is on the rise for sure. Three seconds more is pretty relevant. Neutral item update, consume jelly, uh, duration is down, and the restoration is increased. So quicker heal and you get more out of it. Well, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily more total, I guess. Or is it? You lose two seconds, it's half. No, you get the same, but in less time. Yeah, I mean, that's a buff. That's not bad. Grobo getting nerfed a bit, less range. Pretty fair. Grobo is still very, very strong. Uh, movement speed bonuses decrease from 10 to 5%. Unclouded health and mana regen bonuses uh, reduction when near trees increase from 50 to 75%. Ooh, yeah, Light Collector was super strong. 
The balloon, this garbage piece of shit item that nobody buys. When in mana mode, mana region bonus is increased by 50% from 2.5 to 3.75. And when in health mode, health region bonus is increased from 5 to 7.5. I mean, it's a bit of region increase, but I still feel like the effect it does is too shit. So, I don't know. Still bad, yeah. Still bad, no? Because, like, whip does both of these things. And whip is just better. I don't know. Good on Dusa. How is it good on Dusa? She has no HP pool to convert. I guess it gives a lot of mana region at least. Eh. Eh. I don't know. Yeah, they improved it by 50% is still shit, I think. Every hero wants health and mana. That's true. But, like, that, that ain't it, chief. Um, cold feet mana cost is decreased. So, small A buff. The a arc warding gets nerfed. In his talent on 10 and 20. Batrider flame break damage per second is uh, increased, but burn duration is massively decreased from 5 to 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, that's going to be a big nerf to Batrider. Feels good. Um, yeah, feels very good. That's going to make it possible to salve up faster in lane against it. And like, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be nicer. Also, doesn't synergize as well with sticking Napalm until you have it maxed out now. Uh, and Batrider wants to max out his E as well, so it's rough now for him. The uh, Flaming Lasso cooldown reduction from 10 to 7. 7 seconds CDR? Oh, that's a sad CDR, dude. 7 seconds? Uh, bonus attack speed on Beastmaster is up, together with Dominator buff in the same patch. Hmm. Yeah, Beastmaster might be on the rise. Two more Agi on Bloodseeker. Thirst self-healing is now classified as lifesteal, so it is amplified by lifesteal amplification. Yeah, Sanj didn't work with Thirst, which... I mean, Sanji Asha is a very natural item for the hero, so that's really sad. Or Sanji Kaya, even. Um, so that's a big, big fix. Also, two Agi is not too bad. That's going to help you a bit in lane. Um, Hoof Stump is nerfed. Centaur has been dominating the pro scene. Um, talent also a little bit nerfed. CK, been pretty dumpster. Cast range has increased from 550 to 700. 600, 750. 750? 50 extra little range arrows. Creep multipliers up again as well. Okay, okay. You know, CK getting a little bit relevant again. This could actually put CK back in, in playable territory. With Shadowblade maybe even, with the buff. I mean, it does something. Don't, don't sleep on, you know, small number buffs to CK. They can quickly turn into something big. Uh, Chen, movement speed slow is decreased from 12 to 36 to 12 to 30. And Divine Favor, bonus armor from 12 to 24 to 9 to 18. That's a very gentle nerf for a hero that was ba like banned as much as he was. They even said Chen had it coming. I This, this doesn't do much. You could have gone harder on this guy. Like, have you seen... Have you seen the fucking... Uh, let's see. What do we have? Esports. Uh, Dream League. Picks and bands. Um, bands. Like, th this, this ban rate. This ban rate is up there, man. There was some other tournaments recently that he was banned even more in. I can't remember what it was. But there's one where he was like literally only going through like 2% of the time or something. Um, Siki wasn't doing good. I guess my games aren't good enough to notice because he's still, still your go-to when you carry. Yeah, he, he's not. CK is pretty irrelevant in high level. Powercox, now 50% of the mana burned is added to the damage. I feel like it always should have done this. I like this change because I feel like it always should have been there. CM gets plus 100 mana cost on the Crystal Clone. Yeah, that ability was fucking bonkers. No cooldown, no mana cost, spammable as fuck. You can farm with it, you can fuck people with it, you know, do whatever you want. Very OP. Dark Will gets plus half a second on the Roam of Bedlam. That can really push you over some of the kills. You know, this can get a few of those pew 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 extras out. This increases your solo kill potential, so pretty nice. <clears throat> Your girl finally had a spell that wasn't a million, a billion mana. Yeah, but it was way too good. Crystal Clone was way too good, man. 
Um, it's still a very good spell, even at that. CM is really good mana region nowadays. Um, Thunderstrike, slow duration has increased from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 to 0 0.4 always. Ooh, okay. I guess I got my go-to support hero if I need support sometime. This is pretty nice, especially with new skill build that everyone does, which is uh, zero, well, one, one, four, uh, one, four, one, one, basically build. Um, maxing a glimpse and uh, even going for a zero, two, one build in lane. Uh, you can now find yourself at 1, 2, 1. So you have 1 point Q, 2 points Glimpse, 1 point in Field. And that's going to be pretty nice with this. Um, DK Lucius no longer apply. Dragon Dragons on hit effects if they have reverted back to the melee form. It's probably a good idea. That was pretty bullshit. Corrosive Breath debuff duration is decreased by 2 seconds. And his HP talent is down by 100. Yeah. I mean, DK... Got some pretty good nerfs there, but still very, very strong, I think. 100 less HP, yeah, it's relevant. You could take the other talent, I guess, as well. Like, you have an option. You don't, you're don't. you not hard-locked into always going for the HP. You pretty much do, but, you know, you could take the stun. Uh, you could take the stun. And, uh, I mean, this, this is very minor. Very minor. This is bigger. That, that's the big nerf here. Um... Drow Ranger cooldown is decreased on multi shots down to 15 seconds on max level. That's pretty damn good. Multi shot cooldown reduction is decreased by two seconds though, but means you're still gaining one more second of uptime, you know, than before. You basically got three of the seconds for free, and then there's one extra, you know, second, um, one extra second added onto it. Um, Earth Spirit rolling boulder damage is increased from 30 to 60. Oh, I don't like that idea, man. Mid, mid earth spirits are gonna come back and roll around. Okay, not too much to say about it. Base charge restore is decreased on Ember. Minor buff. Pretty good buff, actually. Three seconds. It's relevant. Not superb, but pretty good. Uh, time dilation slow per cooldown is decreased. Now you have to level it even more. And mana cost is increased from 60 to 90 to 75 to 90. Yeah, they really want you to level up time dilation. <laughs> they really do. Which I always wanted as well. So I think it's good to level it. Bushwhack cooldown reduction decreased from 3 to 2 seconds. Makes sense. It was pretty strong. The knock-up duration is decreased on Kunkka. So maybe a little bit less chain stunning with the Aghanims. Fuck. I clicked on Leshrac. Um, level 20 Pulse Nova damage is decreased from 40 to 35. Again, very minor change. Lich damage rescale from 20 to 50 to 18 to 60. Can now select the Ice Spire as the initial target. That's a little bit cute. That's a little bit cute because now you can reach people, I guess, that you might not be able to range otherwise, I think. If you put the shard down and then throw the, the ulti. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Kind of neat. Uh, Life steer movement speed bonus is decreased. 3% less movement speed. Aghanim Scepter bonus cast range is down. Open Wood's cast range is also down. Wow. Pretty good nerfs to Life Stealer. He has been very popular after all. Arena of Blood cooldown is increased from 90 to 100 to 90. God's Rebuke cooldown reduction also decreased. God damn, dude. No, no Rapier builds, no Brooch. Cooldown nerf on uh, this. Cooldown on ulti nerf. Yeah, Mars, Mars is fucking out of here. The split shot penalty reduction is nerfed. So reduce a slightly weaker. Base movement speed is also reduced. This, this is like a nerf patch, dude. Almost every single hero is getting uh, an anti-power creep here. Like, yeah, there are some heroes getting some buffs. But this is a very nerf-centric patch. That's good, though. Yeah, it's literally what you were asking for, uh, Matthew. I'm not against it. I think it's a good idea. We prevent the power creep a little bit, you know. Yeah, untouched heroes have uh, have taken this patch as a W, then. Base movement speed decreased on the Mirana. Riptide Taunt nerfed. A little bit sad for Nagas. Heartstopper. Uh, aura stack duration Taunt is increased. The Reaper Scythe cast range increased. Heal increased. Well, Necro getting a little bit of a W here. Swashbuckle minus one strike. 
and then the damage is up to compensate for it. So, okay, interesting. Interesting, interesting. So you do end up having uh, like almost the same damage, right? Because it's down by, down by, was it 20 in total? <clears throat> Finally, Pango, uh, maybe unplayable. I don't know about unplayable, but this is going to make the diffusal less of a power spike. Yeah. So the swashbuckle itself is not the important part, but it's going to be worse at proccing maelstroms. The diff isn't going to hurt as much. And in general, he will have lower chance to proc his, um, his third skill. It's up by 20. Oh, is it up by 20? Yeah, because it's 3, 360 versus... Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, it's up. It's up. True. True, true. But it's a good change, I think. That does mean, though, isn't the damage up by more if you do the swash through? Hmm. Let me... To the lab. To the lab on that one. Isn't a stronger with this change? I, I bet you that if you swash through, you're gonna get more damage Where's than before now. Alive? Like, you already do get more damage than before, but you're gonna get like right. even more value. Prepare for battle. Yeah, so we get the extra hit still for the swash through, which means that if we get to level four. Wait, oh, never mind. There's not new patch. We're still an old patch here. But yeah, it should should result. That's good though. We can test it here. So a swash through at level eight pango, you know, with this only, is gonna do 340 damage. There we go. Four, 425 damage if you do it correctly. You gotta go through the opponent. 425. Okay, we can we can update update the client and uh, test it. You know, not so secret, secret mechanic. Anyone who plays Pango and Alt knows about this. If you swash through an opponent, you get one extra hit. So the increase in damage base here with the swash through, isn't that gaining even more damage? Because it's already more damage than before, and now that's going to put it at even more. You would either have the old damage of 85 uh, hits five times, or 85 damage hits five times. So it would be 425. Uh, or you have the new damage now, which is 480. So it's actually a 60 damage increase on a swash through by Pango. Yeah, so he, he will be stronger until until the um, until the diffusal comes out. Then he would be weaker. And this is not insignificant, you know. It's it's not insignificant damage. We have some nerfs to Primal Beast as well. The onslaught damage is reduced on low levels. Aghanim scepter damage per line is down a little bit. Puck's Aghanim shard no longer increases the search range by 200, and Aghanim scepter attack speed is decreased from 100% to 90% of Puck's attack speed. Still very, very good. Um, it this gets hit more by the Parasma nerf. You know, Puck gonna be more bothered by but by, by that. Jesus, no way, man. Plus six base damage. That's a lot of base damage, holy. I mean, as far as damage increases go, that, that's a lot, dude. Why Sand King? <laughs> uh, well, you know, he is probably one of the heroes that cares the least about attack damage in the game, but 0.4 strength uh, gain kind of hurts, though. It does, it does. Yeah, I mean, that is... Almost half a point of strength per level gone, so that's gonna hurt. SF with the Shadow Race buff. Ooh. Yeah, SF buffed. Prepare for all the all the SF Yafets imitators on mid lane. Glaives of Wisdom in steel from 1, 1, 2, 3 to 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 in stolen? Maybe he can be good now. Maybe. I'm still very hesitant about Glaives of Wisdom ever since they made it magic damage. I've been very, very, you know, sketch on it. And now we have nerf to the uh, Parasma as well. I don't know. I'm not sure about Silencer. 
It is a lot of int steel though, which takes away the enemy magic resistance and gains magic resistance and gains more damage. <clears throat> so that's interesting. Scatterblast attack slow, movement slow, and slow duration are uh, now also increased by 50% at point blank range. Wow, just a buff? Oh, yuck, dude. It already sucked to get hit by a scatter blast on mid lane by a uh, snapfire. This should really feel awful now. Sven gets minus one base armor. All right. I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. He has been dominating a lot. We're getting close to exciting territories. Techies, cooldown increased on the Q. Nerfed. TA. Bonus damage increase from 80, 130, 180, 230. 80, 140, 200, 260. TA buff. More damage. I love it, dude. More damage. That means my double double meld uh, trick is going to now have, you know, 60 extra damage. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'll take what I can get, dude. Like I said, most heroes are getting nerfed in this patch. So th this is not like the biggest buff ever, but it's a buff. It's a buff. I'll take it. Pretty good. Uh, TB reflection damage is decreased from 55 to 100% to 40 to 100% and radius is down. Yeah, that's gonna really nerf level 1. Hmm. Yeah, support TB is uh, not gonna enjoy this. You could probably still run it, but it's very underwhelming in laning stage now, I think. Comparatively. Harder to hit people and less damage. If you don't get it on two heroes now and you do less damage with it, for instance, compared to hitting two heroes and doing a lot of damage, it's a very big impact shift. Um... <laughs> If you're running TBS post 5, I don't see you caring about it because they obviously didn't care about Dota 2 from the start. <laughs> Slam! So Madge. So Madge. Uh, timber saw, timber chain uh, damage decreased from 60 to 210 to 50 to 185. And reactive armor max stacks from 15 to 42 to 12 to 42. Okay, so slightly nerfing is early, early game here. Okay. I mean, this hero did need some nerfs. Tinker gets plus two armor. Ah, please, no. Not like this. Who would have thought that giving two armor to Tinker is a good idea? Oh my god. Two armor? Fucking one armor would be too much. Him not being nerfed would be too much. Who the fuck thought Tinker should have two armor? This is your new support, by the way. Just so you know, this is the new post 5 you're gonna see in Dota now. You're gonna see people picking Tinker, running up and just trading hits against the, the offlaner and the and the support 1v2. And the fucking cast range increase on the matrix. Literally. Support Tinker, I'm telling you. This there's no way in hell you're not gonna see support Tinker in this patch. It's gonna be meta. Also mid Tinker. I mean mid Tinker doesn't mind. Two armor is a fucking nice buff. Especially on a hero who has a built-in barrier, which, again, cares about armor. Because it operates on armor. hi yeah, dude. Okay, I'm, I'm... You know what? We're, we're going in here. We're going to our heroes tab. Bands. We're gonna slot this in right now before we fucking forget. Where are you, you fuck? Yep. You can get in there. You can get fucked. He's the first one. Who else? Put, put Viper there, I guess. Who else? Who else deserves to go into the fucking list? Venomancer? I don't care about Venomancer. It's just a meme. Veno can be there if he wants to. I don't give a shit. Uh, who else think they're so fucking good, dude? Who else thinks they're so fucking good? Huskar? Chen? <laughs> well, Chen is more of a problem in pro games. It's not so much a problem for me. Arc. I am the Arc Warden picker, so it's all good. I don't mind it. A Primal Beast is a fucking brain dead hero. Yeah, put that shit there. And Odi. Yeah, the, these heroes. This is the brain dead Gucci gang. Put them all there. Um, tiny tree gap base bonus damage is decreased from 20 to 35 to 14 to 35. 
nerfing support tiny a little bit. Aghanim's shard, max stacks bonus decrease from 4 to 3. Really? Troll gets nerfed? Huh. I haven't seen Troll be relevant at all, but maybe I haven't been watching the right games. Aghanim Scepter no longer slows the enemy movement speed by 40%. Aghanim Scepter now increases the radius by 100 and bonus damage per creep increase from 2 to 8 to 3 to 9. Atrophy Aura buff is pretty nice for him. And then he get Pit of Malice slow. Ah, dude, the slow with the increased AoE is going to be really nasty. Overpower slow resistance is rescaled from 15 to 30% to 10 to 40%. Sure. Sure. I mean, that's a, an overall buff. You'll take that as an Ursa picker. You're very happy about it. And damage is increased on the Simulate to 360. And Gemini attack damage increased by 5 on every level. And that's it. That's the D-Patch.